Today we're going to cover how Law Toolbox transforms Office 365 into matter management for lawyers using Office 365 groups and Microsoft Teams. Law Toolbox lets you manage your deadlines and documents from your Outlook inbox where you spend most of your day. And attorneys can collaborate in Microsoft Teams on the same matters and deadlines in the security of their Office 365 platform. Missed deadlines are the number one cause of malpractice claims against attorneys. And Law Toolbox deadline management inside Office 365 helps protect against this risk. Sign in to your Law Toolbox with your Office 365 credentials. We can see that the add-in has already been enabled with these three buttons. If we didn't have those yet, we can get the add-in here, enter Law Toolbox, select, and enable the app. But since the add-in has already been enabled, all we need to do is click Matters and sign in with our Office 365 account. Let's set up a new matter in Office 365. We are setting up this matter in Outlook, but you and your users can access the same matter in either Outlook or Microsoft Teams. We can set up a matter here, or if we prefer full screen mode, we can select the ellipsis, scroll down and choose Add-ins, and click on New Matter. But let's instead go back to our inbox, click on Matters from here. I prefer a wider screen. That's better. Okay, let's search for our matter. So we'll type in Builders. I don't see the one that I'm looking for. So let's click on New Matter. And we'll enter our matter name and our billing reference number in the matter number field, as well as our client name. And we can leave the rest of the fields empty for now. And click Next. Choose your state. Select the rule set. In this case, we'll choose LA County Superior Court and click Create. Okay, we've just created our Office 365 group for this matter, and now let's select the members. We'll choose the central docketing user, and this happens to be a construction defect case. And then we can select both James and Jean. And now our matter is set up. Next, let's calculate deadlines for an Office 365 matter. So based on my email here, I'll find my case, and I'll click on the blue name for the case, which pulls up my action window, and I'll choose Calculate Deadlines. And here I can select a trigger. In this case, my complaint was filed today, so I'm choosing Commencement, and I'll enter a date, and click Next. Before adding the deadlines to my user's calendars, I'll select one that I don't need, and then scroll to the top, click Sync, and add Selected. Next, let's recalculate deadlines when trigger dates like trials or depots are rescheduled. Okay, so we've received an email letting us know that a trial has been continued, so we'll open up Matters and search for that matter. Here it is at the top. We're going to select View and Edit Deadlines. So we could search for a trigger date, or we can just scroll down, and you'll notice that many of these deadlines are green, and the only ones that are black are those that we chose not to add to end user calendars. Okay, so we found our trial date. We're gonna click on the pencil, and we're gonna enter the new date one week later. We recalculated over 72 deadlines based on the new trial date, which simultaneously moved those green entries on all user and practice calendars in a single click. We can easily find the, the trial date by entering the word trigger, and that will pull up all trigger dates. And what we want to do now is click on the, uh, the clock to change this from a all-day event and enter a location for the trial. So we'll enter a courtroom. And then we're going to choose a start time. And we'll choose a duration. And in this case, we're going to say that the duration is 8 hours and 30 minutes. And when we click on Convert, 
Now we'll see our trial at that specific time of day. This is a great time to send an email to your team with a list of the regenerated trial deadlines. So here's the report I'm going to forward to the attorneys on the case. Attorneys can see which deadlines were, were rolled forward or backward off weekends and court holidays based on the rules, and they can click on authority links for complex deadlines. Next, we'll calculate deadlines for multiple instances of motions, hearings, depots, and discovery. So we'll open the case, for, and from the action menu, choose calculate deadlines. In this trigger, select trigger, we'll type in discovery and select date written discovery was served, and we'll enter that date. Here we'll select how the method of service occurred. We're choosing by mail within California. And because this is the first time that we're doing ROGS on Smith, we're gonna enter the description so we can come back later. Every time I calculate deadlines, I need to click the sync button. This gives me a chance to deselect the dates that don't apply. In this case, I'll add them all. Let's enter one more written discovery. This one will be for A1 ROGS served on Brown. Now let's fast forward in time. We received Smith's responses to discovery. So we'll click calculate, type discovery, select responses to discovery, choose method of service, this time, we're going to select from the pull-down list which party we received discovery for. Next, let's edit and remove trigger dates and deadlines. Let's remove a trigger date. Turns out the brown written discovery that I thought was served today won't happen till next week. When I remove the trigger date, all corresponding deadlines are also removed. Now let's edit a deadline. The deadline for Smith to respond to discovery has been extended to August 5th. If we had a link to an order, we could paste it here. Instead of adding a start date and location, in this case, we'll leave this as an all day event deadline. Let's remove a deadline we've decided we don't need the preemptory challenging of a judge deadline. So we can click on the calendar, and this will remove deadlines from Outlook. But in this case, let's instead click on the trash can and remove the deadline from everywhere. Now let's add case-specific deadlines and appointments. Let's add a case-specific deadline. We'll pull up the action menu and click Add Deadline or Appointment. We'll select our date. We received an order from the judges asking us to submit a proposed court order, and we'll click Next. Here we could add a link to the order if we had it. We'll click Next, and we'll leave this as an all-day event, so we select that box and click Create. Okay, now we need to add an appointment to the matter, so we'll pull up the Action menu and click Add Deadline or Appointment. And this time we're going to enter a description to meet with the client for depot prep. If we had a document, we could paste the link in here. And we'll choose a start time, location, and duration. And click Create. Next, let's view entries in end user and matter calendars. Deadlines and events automatically update real-time natively inside your Office 365 mailbox based on who the Law Toolbox matter is shared to. Sharing in Law Toolbox controls members of the Office 365 group, which is what Microsoft Teams are based on. Now let's click on a link to the authority governing that deadline. 
Authority links in Outlook calendars allow attorneys to analyze complex deadlines from any device, including laptops, iPads, and phones. And users can also navigate to a matter calendar in SharePoint. And here is the A1 Builders v. Smith matter calendar that we see in SharePoint. And we can see the week view here. Law Toolbox deadlines and events also automatically update to firm calendars and practice calendars where appropriate. Next, we'll see how to manage general matters for basic calendaring and corporate legal transactions. Law firms and legal departments will also have other matters that don't have predictable deadlines. And in this case, they can enter those as general matters. So we're going to choose the state, and we're going to select general matters. And this is for the ACME deal. And when we click Create, add our users. And now we'll click on the Action menu and add deadline or appointment. And we'll enter the deadline for due diligence expires and click Next. And if we had a link, we would paste it here to a document. And because this is a deadline, we'll choose All Day Event and Create. And for any legal calendaring, including, for example, deadlines and reminders for leases, contracts, regulatory deadlines, administrative deadlines, or other compliance-driven areas of practices, law firms and legal departments can email support at lawtoolbox.com to request trigger dates and deadlines for those rule sets. Adding and removing users from matters is really easy. Click on the Action menu and Share Matter. So in this case, James Stern is on leave, and we need to remove him from the matter. And all of the deadlines have been immediately removed from his calendar, and he's also been removed from the Office 365 group and Microsoft team. Now let's fast forward two months. James is back in action. He's off of leave, and we want to add him back into this matter. We click Add, and now the deadlines are back on his calendar. You can also share deadlines with clients, co-counsel, and experts outside your firm. If I want to add a specific event to an external user's calendar, I'll search for that item. I'll deselect everything on the deadline chart, and then just select the entry I want. Click External. I'll enter the email address. I'll choose the calendar type and time zone. And if I need to edit that date and time later on, I can resend this entry to the external user. And because of the unique identifier, the entry will automatically move on their calendar. The history of changes shows us who edited what deadline and when. So click on the history icon for the deadline you'd like to see the history for. And at the bottom, we can see when that item was created, who created it, and what the due date was originally. And if we go to the top, we can say when it was most recently modified, who modified it, and when is it due as of today. Next, we'll check out deadline analytics, where we can see how long it takes to get to trial or to resolve a motion. To look at the analytics, we'll go to the action menu for a case. We'll click View Analytics, and here we can see the average time to trial from commencement across all Law Toolbox users, just for my firm or specifically for me. I can click Get Motion Analytics to see the same information for days till resolution of a motion. Law Toolbox automates six types of reminders depending on what customers need. First, on the day of the deadline, entries appear on the calendar for the users in the Matter calendar in SharePoint and on firm or practice calendars if applicable. They get a one-day pop-up alert the day before, a seven-day email reminder. Best practice is a 14-day reminder of upcoming deadlines for all attorneys, and that can be attorney by attorney. Users get suggested best practice deadlines for time-consuming entries, such as hiring an, extra, an, an expert witness several months before trial. Users can also add their own reminders for specific deadlines. Law Toolbox aggregates data for robust reporting across Office 365 for an organization. Click Reports in the top right corner, and here we can pull reports for various users. 
we can choose, for example, the firm calendar, or we can choose a practice group if we use one of those, or in our case, we're going to choose Jean Contoso. We can leave the defaults or select our own. I'm going to click View Report. Now we can filter what we found here during that time frame by searching for specific words like expert or events like trial date or type, like appointments, or even hashtags like court appearance. Now that we have this report, we can email it. We can also download it. Once the report has been downloaded, you can sort the information however you would like. The emailed report has been filtered for just the expert deadlines. And here we see the shorter descriptions for the deadlines. When we go back to reports, let's generate for Jean a 14-day report that is typically provided to attorneys on Fridays for the next 14 days in the date range section. And instead of generating the report using the default short descriptions, And here we'll choose long descriptions, and then we'll click email and forward this report to the attorney. Most attorneys choose to receive email reminders. These are generated automatically seven days before each deadline and arrive in the end user's inbox. Busy attorneys use these to forward to associates, asking them for a first draft of the pleading due. And if we go back to reports, we can click on the, light the lightning bolt and select the matter sharing report and select a group, the firm, or a specific user like Jean Contoso. This report is helpful when new users join a firm or somebody leaves the firm so that cases can be reassigned. This can be emailed or downloaded. The downloaded version includes created and modified dates and can be used as a matter list. When closing a matter, we go to the action menu, click close case at the bottom, close matter. And once we do this, all of the upcoming deadlines for all users have been removed from their Outlook calendars. We can go and click on the filter at the top, choose my archives and reactivate the case anytime. Law Toolbox is more than a robust docketing system in your Outlook inbox with all the bells and whistles. It transforms your Office 365 mailbox into a matter-based collaboration system on the world's most secure platform. Make sure to mention Law Toolbox to see if you qualify for additional credits on your malpractice premiums. Thank you for listening in, and if you have any questions, please email support at lawtoolbox.com.